Hi there, it's October 7th, 2014, 2.15 in the morning, or October 8th, 2014, very early in the morning. I was looking at this Edgar Casey's uh, website, well, a website about Edgar Casey and some of the readings. He was a famous psychic that... Um, foretold many things. But here um, they're talking about how he was talking about um, Edgar Casey mentioned ancient America in 68 different readings. These readings covered migrations to America, mound builders, the Norse, and other events. Um, and then down here they're talking about um, several teams of genetic Researchers at prominent American universities have been conducting studies of the DNA of American Native Americans. Although results from early studies show the expected Siberian Asian ancestry of the majority of modern Native American tribes, things that took an unexpected turn in 1997 when it was found that a small percentage of modern Native Americans have an unusual type of DNA known to exist only in a few locations in Europe and the Middle East. Subsequent research indicated that the European DNA was not the result of genetic mixing after Columbus, as the same DNA was found in the bone of an ancient American burial, confirming that people carrying this unique DNA had entered America in ancient times. This unique gene was also found in a small tribe living in the northern Gobi Desert area. The DNA research initially seemed to promise solid proof, if not only where the ancient Americans came from, but also when they came. So then um, it goes on to talk about how the DNA um, works as far as being able to tell where people came from the mitochondrial DNA. The haploid mitochondrial DNA shows only the female lineage of a person. Diploid, diploid genes are the two, two sets of con combined chromosomes of the female set coming from the egg. The male chromosomes from the sperm mitochondrial DNA, and in parentheses mtDNA, is categorized into several types and groups termed help low types and help low groups. That is, there are variations in the genetic cycle of the mitochondria that fit into these clusters. These clusters can trace lineage far back into time. There are 39 different distinct mtDNA groups into which all humans fit, and there are variations on these types, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The link will be posted below so you can look at it yourself. Um, and then they talk about the migration and um, this unknown and unexpected migration group confirmed in in 1997 the fifth mtDNA help low group was identified in the Na Native Americans. This group called X is present in three percent of living Native Americans. Help low group X was not found in Asia but was found only in Europe and the Middle East, where 2 to 4 percent of the population carry it. In those areas, the X Helplo group has primarily, primarily been found in parts of Spain, Bulgaria, Finland, Italy, and Israel. A few people with the X type have been identified in the Altasians tribe located in, in extreme southern Siberia in the Gobi Desert area. In addition, the X type is now been found in the ancient remains of the Basque people. So then I was reading some more and um, they talk about um, it being found in small numbers in the Yakima, Sioux, and the Navajo tribes. It has been found to a large degree in the Ojibwa, Oneida, and the Nuth tribes. Now I didn't know what that tribe was in here. So I thought I'd look it up, and that's very interesting, but um, here we 
find on Wikipedia that they talk about the, and I'm probably not pronouncing this right at all, Nu Cha Nuth, Nuth um, tribe, the indigenous peoples of the Pacific Northwest coast of Canada. And here's a couple of children that are part of the tribe. Um, and here's a picture of some women that are gathering cedar bark for clothing. And so then I found this um, article here where they're talking about um, James Cook, who discovered them. Um, well, encountered them. I'm, I said that completely wrong. James Cook encountered them um, because they were already discovered, of course. Um, but in here, they're talking about this um, person that was leading the group, Maquina, um, captured the American trading ship, the Boston, in March 1803. And he and his men killed the captain and all the crew, sparing only two, who the, whom they kept as slaves. John R. Jewett wrote a classic classic tale of cap captivity about his years with them and his reluctant integration into their society. This book is entitled Narrative of the Adventures and Sufferings of John R. Jewett, the only survivor of the crew only survivor of the crew of the ship of Boston during a captivity of nearly three years among the savages <laughs> of the Nootka Sound with an account of the manners, mode of living, and religious opinions of the natives. Now, that intrigued me enough. And then reading a little further, it is a useful source of historical information on many aspects of daily life, including the hunting and preparing of food, the making of clothing and implements, the fashions of hairdos and bodies, decoration, the system of government and punishment, canoes, warfare, and spiritual beliefs. So I was very curious about that book because I'm curious about the way they lived. And so then I looked up the book and I found um, this on the Library of Congress. Um, and I'll have the links to all this below. And you can go and read online right here. Read online. And then it's really easy. Um, here's the book. And you can go um, page to page. Wonderful. Um, they talk about the beginning of before the the ship even sailed, and then into when they met um, these people. And um, it's really nice because you can make it um, bigger with this. And you can um, push this little arrow and get rid of the other stuff on the top and bottom, and you can read whatever, you know, however you want. Um, and then just click that again and just go from page to page. But the interesting thing is that he doesn't seem like he um, wasn't enjoying himself. Actually, because I read some of it. I haven't read all of it. I was starting to get sleepy and I thought I'd make this little video before I, um, before I uh, went to sleep. Because I thought that some of you might really enjoy this. Here he's talking about when they, after they killed everybody on board, they thought, um, except for him, they saved him because he knew how to take care of the guns. And he's saying, um, when they found the other person, he threw my, I threw myself on my knees at McQuinna's feet and implored him with tears in my eyes to spare my father's life. So there's an interesting story about that. But um, he's talking about how um, the, P 
people, um, like, especially, like, the women were, um, very kind to him. And he says a lot of stuff that's, um, like, when he's talking to, about his son, and they're talking about all the food, and they take care of him, he, um, the feast consisting of whale blubber, smoked herring, spawn, dried fish, and train oil, which I was wondering what train oil meant, and that's um, whale oil, of which they eat most plentifully. And the food that they eat is actually one of the, is really, really good for you. It's good for people, and they just talk about all the stuff that is, like, totally interesting, and it's very, very easy to read this on here. So if you're interested at all in any of this, I would say please check it out because it's so easy to look at. And, that, and like I said, all the links will be below so you can find it yourself and save it on your computer if you want and take a look at it. I thought I'd uh, show you some other pictures of the New Chan News uh, people. This is, uh, help you learn about our language, a uh, picture of inside of one of the buildings. Here's the main page of that site, um, and this means everything is one and all is interconnected. I totally believe that. Here is stuff that you can look at, language, um, phrases, how to say all this stuff, culture, culture stories, all sorts of interesting stuff here. including the role of women. Very interesting. Picture of a longhouse. Inside. It's very beautiful right there. Talks about the area just beautiful, 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 incredible artwork, the way some of them were decorated, are decorated, incredibly beautiful. Basic frame, which these boards are heavy and that would have taken people working together. Talk about simple work here. And that would have been nice to be hanging out with everybody there. So they split the wood to make the plank make the boards for the house. And here's a village. And here this site says, the people of the northwest coast were hunter-gatherers, so they relied on hunting, fishing, and gathering edible plants as their main sources of food. Since there was plenty of food available to them, they never needed to develop a system of ag agriculture to sustain their people. And here they show um, fishing with a net, salmon, smelt, crab, whale, oysters, otter, turtle, I don't know how to pronounce that, fish, seals, making oil, deer, elk, mountain goat. Here's a box they used for cooking, a sledgehammer for splitting the wood. I'm grateful you're here, and I am here at your service. I'm just about out of time. I hope you enjoy looking at this stuff as much as I do. Bye-bye now.